Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast on all of the internet. But today, it is the most special episode of all. It's the fifth annual Golden Heads. Oh, you're, oh, they're everyone. I, I got tripped up because everybody held up both of their hands. Were so you I, trying, you thought we were telling you to stop? <laughs> you were telling me no. to either stop or, or it's the 10th episode. No, no, no. Keep was, going. This is yeah. great. I'm Summer Rain. <laughs> I'm Patrick Nisley. <laughs> I'm Jordan Willis. And I'm David Howe. And it is, it's not the 10th. It is the fifth Golden Heads Awards. It is our, it, it's our game of the year episode everybody mm -hmm. we are going to be going through and giving our very special awards as well as some that you might also be familiar with a very exciting time it's been just the best year of our lives <laughs> this year uh, best, <laughs> best year of our lives as gamers worst yeah, sure. year of our lives as uh being sympathetic to the people who make the game <laughs> yeah 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 but it's been a hell of a year it's it's so nice to, be, to finally be at the end of the year be talking our our, our favorites, our 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 goddies, our golden heads. This is going to be a super fun one. Oh, you game. say Gotti, huh? Sure, I say Gotti sometimes. <laughs> I say yeah. Goaty. What do you two say? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I say Goaty as well. You Patrick say says game of the year like a sophisticate. <laughs> and I also uh, put punctuation <laughs> in my texts. <laughs> <laughs> you you sign all your texts. Love Patrick. <laughs> LOL. Love lots Mama. of love. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we're excited. We're excited to do this episode. <laughs> oh, man. Should we get into it or y'all? How are we doing? Are we, are we, anyone want to say anything yeah. before we get, get yeah. into it? Yeah. Well, I know at least Summer and I are back in our childhood homes right now. Right. Uh, yeah, we, full disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. We made we made the trek. Uh, we brought, we schlepped our uh, recording Stuff. equipment uh, to <laughs> right, our parents' house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, forgive any audio inconsistencies. But I'm having a pretty good break so far. It's been nice. I've already like watched three movies with my dad since I've been here. Uh, so it's been a pretty good time. So what far. movies? Uh, Iron Claw, Anatomy of a Fall. And what was the, oh, Maestro. Uh, so kind of all award seasons contenders, oh. you know, it was pretty good. We had a good Unlike time. me and my dad who have watched three movies together, but it's just been Elf three times. <laughs> <laughs> Inside me, there are two. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I don't know the rest of that meme. But uh, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> how, yeah, how, how are y'all? You guys having a good uh, winter break so far? I mean, I know, Jordan, you've been working your ass off so far. It's been, yeah. Uh, today we shot, we, we had a day eight of the feature film I'm shooting. Uh, we shot yesterday as well. Uh, we also was working on the TV show and we were filmed last weekend. And I also worked the week before that. And I had one accidental day off sometime in there. But uh, and I'm slowly <laughs> coming unraveled. I'm, hold, I'm holding. Bro, you together. gotta get COVID or something, man, and just know. like <laughs> take a couple of weeks. Off. I don't recommend that. It's not. <laughs> it didn't work out <laughs> well for me. Yeah, Patrick's food story. I think I'm good. I yeah. think I'll just uh, you know, keep working. And except for tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna go, go to San Antonio and uh, hang out with my family. And then uh, Christmas Day, we're gonna go hang out with Valerie's family in Victoria. So that'll both be fun. And I'm looking forward to like those days off. And then. The 26th, I have a true day off of nothing. So I'm really excited for that. But, you know, I really Boxing can't day. complain too much. Boxing day. Let's you go. Know, still doing well. Everything's going well. It's just busy. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I got so sick, I don't really get that much time off. I used it all up being sick. And um, uh, it's been really busy and stressful at work. And I've also not been fully recovered. So I've been like, passing out real early and being real tired. So uh, it's not been great, but I think I've turned a corner. You look very handsome, if that means anything. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. I think that's... You're my, handsome, you're my beautiful <laughs> handsome boy. Are we, I think we should move on. Are you all ready? Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right. So um, <laughs> if this is your first time listening to one of our end of the year awards shows, just briefly, we are going to be alternating uh, more or less between giving out our Golden Heads Awards, which are... Um, uh, we'll give out like a, a sort of unique category and then specialty awards announce the nominees and then the winner for these specialty awards. And then we'll switch back to sort of picking um, 
are our favorites within a, a category, and we'll alternate like that. Um, and it should hopefully be clear. And also, uh, yeah, that if it's not, you'll still enjoy yourself. Um, but <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> also, uh, tune in on uh, YouTube on this one. We got a bunch of video stuff we're going to be throwing in as well. Yes, that's a good call. And without any much, uh, with no more further ado, Jordan, why don't you take it away and give us our first Golden Heads Award? Oh, I would be honored. Okay. All right. Welcome to the Headies. <laughs> <laughs> the Dynamite Headies. The Dynamite Headies. Let's go. <laughs> All right. For our first award, we got Best Nintendo Remake slash Remaster, which we got a ton of this year. Mm -hmm. Kind of both on purpose and accidentally and surprisingly. So mm -hmm. uh, the nominees are Metroid Prime Remastered, Advanced Wars 1 and 2, Reboot Camp, Super Mario RPG, and Kirby Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Mm. And the Golden Heads Award for Best Nintendo Remake Remaster goes to Metro Prime Remastered. Wow. Got to do it. Excellent. Got to do what it. A, I love. I what love an it. excellent game. Yeah. Is, it, is it even really, is it a remake? Is it a remaster? It's hard to really say. <laughs> you know, that's why it wins this category because it's a little bit of both. Why mm. not? You know, porque no los dos. So <laughs> it's a beautiful game. Holds up pretty well over time. Glad to see it get a, a nice coat of paint that it deserves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, tough, tough win because there were a lot of Nintendo went hard on the remakes and, and stuff this year. There's even some that didn't make it into this cat to the yeah. nominations. The Pikmin 1 and 2 were re-released. I don't know Ooh, if they, yeah. um, they were upscaled. They were so upscaled, I so I think they count. We'll move on then to um, our first, you know, everybody's going to give a pick, which is going to be the best Nintendo first party or exclusive um, game. So mostly games made by Nintendo, but there are a few games. Uh, that fit this category that were made by other companies that are just Switch exclusives. I don't know if anybody's going to pick those. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> who would like to go first uh, with this one? Who's feeling really uh, good about their pick? Uh, you know, I think I'll go first. Um, I really, this year was an incredible year uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, only one of which was the return of F-Zero. Uh, my pick for Nintendo exclusive of the year is F099. Look, what there might have been shit. games that I wild. fully enjoyed more than F099 as a totality, but the sheer amount of joy I got out of playing F099 this year, and just the fact that I'm playing a new entry in the F0 franchise at all, and it was done in a way that only Nintendo can do it right? Using the Tetris 99 method, using their battle royale, utilizing NSO to give it to us for free. I was so surprised, gobsmacked, and delighted by F-099. I keep playing it. I've been, I was just playing it the other day, and I think that's why I like, remembered <laughs> how much I loved it. Um, uh, but yeah, F-099 uh, gets my uh, word for uh, best Nintendo first party or exclusive uh, this year. All right. Well, uh, that I am surprised. Um, <laughs> I wanted to start off with some controversy. <laughs> Incredible. Well, then I would love to go next. Go next. To, because I would love to say something that everyone expects, and that's Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice. Uh, and it, so again, I'll go ahead and say in a year where we did get a lot of great original games from Nintendo, what I'll say about it as well is it's the game that has gotten me fully immersed into being like full into Legend of Zelda mode because it's gotten me to go back and play a bunch of other games that I've never played before. So not only did I put a hundred hours into it, but mm -hmm. it has made me play all of these other games. And for a game to have that kind of power makes it, I feel like it goes beyond itself in that way um, mm -hmm. with wanting to learn more about the universe as a whole. Um, and even it, it doesn't, and it doesn't need to do that. It's also just fun on its own. Incredible, mm -hmm. incredible game. Nice. Yeah, I'll go next, uh, mostly because I had the same pick, you know. I, uh, <laughs> I it's hard to not do it. I like was like, you know, reviewing all my reviews yeah. of the year. And I mean, it's definitely by far and away the, mo the game I played the most this year. Yeah, I, I put agree. 134 hours into it in May. 
alone. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that where I was like, okay, I think that's probably my favorite game of the year then. Uh, I don't know what else it would be. And, you know, I, I'll, for a lot of these picks, I'm trying to pick like, uh, I remember Matthew Stoner, uh, mm-hmm. friend of the pod. Uh, rest in he, peace. Yeah, rest in peace. He had a uh, very nice system of like how much joy did it bring you mm. and uh, this is a versus like how much you spent time with it and this is like that perfect confluence of both and the reason i spent so much time with it was because it was so amazing to just explore that world but then also be creative within that world with the super hand and just everything was awesome so i had to go the same thing uh anyway patrick what about you uh yeah well uh i went a little bit different route than everybody else i guess and i am going with super mario bros wonder Very um good. I, there might be a little bit of recency bias in all of my picks <laughs> to be honest with you i tried for there not to be but uh i think it happens i've been playing this a lot right now <laughs> yeah. um i've been going back and getting all the things we missed and um that has been like wicked fun um finding all the secret exits and all the uh playing the harder you know levels at the end and and so i also just love mario i love 2d platformers and there's a lot of joy in this game so my pick is super mario bros wonder for first party exclusive very good man Here's the question. Is Patrick actually going to give Pikmin 4 any awards this year? You're going to have to tune <laughs> in and find out. Because uh, I thought that might be the one to take it. But uh, very, very interesting. All right. Uh, we're, uh, I guess we'll move on uh, to our next Golden Head Award. I've got the honor of presenting uh, this next Golden Head Award for you good people right now. And uh, the category for this one is Next Canceled Live Service Game. Uh, There have been tons of uh, live service game cancellations, and there's a bunch on the horizon. We're going to give you the award for next canceled live service game. And the nominees are Disney Speedstorm, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, GTFO, Fortnite Festival, and (laughs) F-099. And the golden heady for the next canceled live service game goes to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This game they are is dead on arrival. <laughs> they should have made a Superman game like they wanted. <laughs> if the Avengers couldn't do it, I'm not sure why. I mean, I guess the Avengers did it for a little while. <laughs> Look, we, I talked to my good friend David from the future, and he told me that this is the next, <laughs> the next canceled live service game. So, Very nice. Uh, well, they earned it. Um, <laughs> oh, poor Rock City. <laughs> so... Um, Coming up uh, next, we're all going to give a pick for best indie game. And to be clear, these for for most of these categories, these are all games. These are all since we're a Switch podcast. These are all games that you can play on the Switch unless we otherwise state so. So that's kind of a a general limitation. Um, And David's raising his eyebrows. Maybe his picks aren't, and that's fine. Um, (laughs) Some of mine aren't. That's how we've done it in the past, but that's not how we're doing it anymore. All right, so. uh, Best indie game. I'm going to go first, if y'all don't mind, um, because this is a big caveat for all of my picks, which is, y'all, I did not play a lot of games this year. I did not buy a lot of games. I did not have a job for the first three-fourths of this year, and I was very uh, choosy, and the only games I bought, (laughs) more or less, were first-party Nintendo games for talking about on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also was obsessed with Yeah, that. I remember I remember the seven-month period of you saying the only game you've been playing is Splatoon 3. Right, so uh, that's... <laughs> that didn't come out this year. So, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, so it's made it difficult. And in fact, as I looked back, I don't believe until today <laughs> I played a indie game that came out this year um, on the Switch, but I did play one today. And so it's going to win by default. I just picked this up because it was on sale. Uh, I picked up Gravity Circuit, um, which is um, uh, sort of a Mega Man-like, and I have only played for like 20 minutes. That's my choice. (laughs) Who wants to go next? I love your honesty. I'll go next. Uh, My favorite indie game this year was definitely Sea of Stars. Mm. Uh, Shout out, David. Thanks uh, for letting me put those hours on your... (laughs) switch in review. Glad somebody did. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It just kind of hit all the right notes for me. Like a lot of RPGs. I like, you know, Mario and Luigi, paper, old school paper Mario, just where you have to time your button presses to get better stats. And this one added this whole like elemental system that was like unusual. It wasn't, you know, fire, 
water, wind, earth. It was like a sun, moon, mm. like poison. Uh, I can't, it's escaping me now, but and then also on top of like sharp weapons, blunt weapons, and so it just kind of had like a lot of complexity within the yeah. uh, battle system. On top of, I love the world exploration. Reminded me of like Golden Sun. So I just it just hit all the right notes for me and what I want out of an indie game. You know, it's great pixel art, great. Uh, mechanics that feel modern and fresh and uh the story was good as well so great music too oh the music's fantastic but we can talk about that later or not <laughs> we'll find out oh wow was stay a spoiler alert? <laughs> stay, stay tuned foreshadowing teasing <laughs> my indie game of the year was venba uh mm. which yes you can play on the switch um, I also didn't play as many indie games this year, but this was one of them. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous game. If you have time to check it out. Um, I, it's, it's basically about, uh, getting in touch with your ancestors through, uh, food. And so there's some great recipes in the game, um, that you can actually learn. Um, and just every chapter is like, Gut wrenching and heartwarming at the same time. Just what a beautiful story. Highly recommend. Mm, yeah, I can't wait to pick that one up. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, my uh, indie game of the year. Uh, actually, I, I had a few favorites, and none of them were on the Switch. So I ended. This is one that is not on Switch Award. Uh, uh, my runners up for the record were Pizza Tower and Vivid Lope, uh, two games I've talked about on the podcast. But I gotta say, my favorite indie game of the year was pseudo regalia uh it's a, a steam game exclusively right now uh some of you that uh, might remember me talking about it it's a 3d platformer metroidvania um such a fun game short and sweet uh it's a game that i can easily recommend to everybody who has a, a platform that they can play it on as it's not on switch currently hopefully that changes in the future um but this was a game i just adored uh and i gobbled up uh, it was, uh, out of all the indie games I played this year, other than like, you know, Picross related games, <laughs> this was the one that I, uh, couldn't put down the most. Uh, so pseudo regalia gets uh, my pick for indie of the year. Nice. Well, now we've got our next golden heads award category is best Mario voice actor. <laughs> We had an unprecedented amount of Mario voice actors this year. <laughs> right, exactly. So, and being a you know Nintendo Switch podcast, we have to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, nominees are Charles Martinet, Chris Pratt, and Kevin Afghani. Mm. And the winner is Charles Martinet. Oh, oh yes. Oh, President wins again. <laughs> right? Ke Chris Pratt and Kevin Afghani have plenty of time to win this award in the future. It's, <laughs> it's got to go. It has to go to the legacy, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, legacy choice. And he'll be here to give his speech next year when he presents the award for next year. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we will be on the next Golden Heads Awards. Thank you. Uh, uh, we're yeah, we be we're bearing the lead there. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that brings us to uh, our next pick, where we're going to go around the circle here, and that's going to be for best music. So, uh, man, a lot of games have great music. Who who's really feeling their pick? Who wants to go first? For me, uh, you know, I was talking about Sea of Stars, and that did not win my best pick for best wow. music. Even though the music in that game is very good. Uh, this is another game I played this year. Just wanted to get a little bit of love because I did end up playing probably like 40 hours of it. It's a uh, Cult of the Lamb. The Ooh. soundtrack is phenomenal. Like when I was kind of going through all the games of the year, you know, trying to figure out what I played this year, I put that soundtrack on and I listened to it all the way through. So I was like, this soundtrack is banging. It's like a little bit like kind of lo-fi, but kind of like culty evil vibes, like chill cult evil vibe. And I, I just like can't really picture another soundtrack quite like it. And uh, it just made the game experience much more enjoyable, especially because when you're in the town, you're listening to one of the songs like over and over again. And it's a banger. So it better be it better be pretty good. So it got stuck in my head. So for me, that was the best music that I heard all the year in a video game. Awesome. I'll go next. Uh, my pick for uh, best music of the year uh, for me goes to Pizza Tower. 
I loved the soundtrack for this game. It was hectic. It was insane. And it perfectly matched the chaos of the game and the insanity of kind of the the mid every level kind of has a midpoint in that game where you make your way all the way to the end and then have to circle back and go back to the beginning of the level and do the whole level in reverse. And every time this like crazy theme pops back in whenever that happens and it pumps me up so much and I get so excited and I really, really love the soundtrack to pizza tower. I love so much about pizza tower. In fact, it's a runner up on so many of my categories this year. Um, I want to give shout outs real quick to some of my other favorites as well, which were uh, for me were cocoon starfield and the Mario Kart eight deluxe booster course pass. Uh, those <laughs> all also had amazing soundtracks as well, but uh, the pick for me would be pizza tower. And my best music of the year has to go to tears of the kingdom mm, um, oh yeah i just this and this ties into it being my like some of the things that i said about it um how it brought me back to the entire franchise as a whole um once i started to learn about how music is used throughout the entire zelda franchise um and then having that connection with it to how it is used in tears of the kingdom there was no way i couldn't give my award to it um and just I, to the point where it has inspired me, it is, you know, heavily affected um, my um, IRL life as I put my <laughs> as I put my Cass inspired look together and I'm preparing mm-hmm. to play all of these songs, um, you know, in that sort of way. Um, just like as a bard in real life, I can't, um, yeah. I can't not address it. <laughs> no, Kat, where was Cass in Tears of the Kingdom? We need you to play all the Tears of the Kingdom <laughs> themes as that's, Cass. That's exactly what I'm going for. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be that representation. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that this this almost made the cut for me as well. While I was like trying to remember all my favorite soundtracks from the year, I ended up going with Pizza Tower. But today, the Tears of the Kingdom theme was stuck in my head all day. So <laughs> that proves that. Uh, I also almost went with Tears of the Kingdom, but uh, I I really struggled with this one. I I wasn't sure what to pick. Um, And I think it's just because recency as well. But I've been humming the tunes from Super Mario Bros. Wonder all week um, because we've been playing it a lot. And so it's really stuck in my head and it's joyful and and fun. So that's that's going to be my pick uh, once again Very good. <laughs> here for this one is Super Mario Bros. Wonder uh, music is 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 getting me and just the sound design and when you, the the pick, which I don't I don't know if that's quite, you know, what we're talking about with this award, but we don't really have one. But all the like sound effects and how yeah. it changes yeah. when, you know, little things happen and stuff like that. So, well, that all blends together. And I think of the sound design and the music design were both uh, at least overseen by Koji Kondo. And it's it's very, yeah, the, the jumps are very musical. and uh, Yeah. It's yeah. just crazy that he's still working on the soundtracks for Mario games, like all these years later, you know? Um, well, that's going to bring us to our next Golden Heads Award, which this one is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this award is for the least indie indie game. So <laughs> wait, 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 it's the, the least indie game. The least indie <laughs> game, right? So um, there's, there's a number of... Indie games that are questionably indie. And this came up when the other game awards show happened. And and some of the the nominations in indie game category struck some people the wrong way. So for at least indie game, the nominees are Dave the Diver, Baldur's Gate 3, Hi-Fi Rush, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And the winner of the least indie game is Dave the Diver. Uh, Somehow, I don't know why it wasn't Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, but it wasn't. Um, We don't make the rules. We just report the news. Yeah, it's just how it worked out. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, You know, Dave the Diver is the least indie game of all time. Everyone (laughs) knows I I think that's right. (laughs) Sorry, Dave, but (laughs) Modern Warfare 3 is more indie than you. So next up, we're going to all give our pick for best visual design. Art style, animations, um, uh, visuals, right? So anybody really feeling their pick? I went with Persona 5 Tactica for my best visuals. It was a late contender this year, uh, but I've played enough of it to say that it has the same sleek visuals of the original Persona 5 
combined with um, just I. Well, I say combined with, I, I still really enjoy the visuals of it. I know some people were complaining about what it looks like. To me, it kind of reminds me of Panty and Stocking, the, uh, mm. the, that original animation, which personally hits uh, as a big um, PSG fan. So uh, I I am adoring it. So it is still visually the complete package, uh, and it's really easy for me to um, just, uh, it plays into the full package of like being a Persona game still for me in that way. Um, just striking to look at. Very good. You're the only person I know that is playing Persona 5 Tactica. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it because awesome. I mean, the it was it was hard for me to not choose it for music because it's a Persona game in that sure. way as well. And you know, I love tactics games, so it's great in that way too. Yeah, awesome. My pick for best visual design, I went with Metroid Prime Remastered because it was such a glow up. It really redefined what I thought of was what was possible with switch graphics. Cause I feel like, you know, I was kind of stuck in, you can do kind of like tears of the kingdom, cell shaded kind of style graphics, and you can do, do that really well. But if you want to go like super sci-fi, semi-realistic graphics, it's going to be really hard to do, but I'm like, this game is incredibly gorgeous. And I don't know if it's because it's kind of a corridor shooter with small environments that they're able to like pack in a lot of better art, assets or what but i was just completely blown away with the amount of power they were able to squeeze out of the switch and it also i mean the, the game already had an incredible design aesthetic but yeah so like just took it up so many levels that i just i had to like be in awe when i was playing the whole thing you know down to the <coughs> the, the steam effects going over your visor like the different blast particle effects anyway it's just great yeah, I was always like, this game, they should just port the original game in HD to the Switch. It doesn't need an upgrade. And then I saw this upgrade and I was like, I was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll go next because mine is a little bit similar. Uh, my uh, choice for best visual design uh, is Super Mario RPG. This is another game where they just kind of made the graphics look better without changing too much. But it just works so well. I think this is one of the best looking games on the Switch. I think they tr did what they tried to do with Link's Awakening remake, which also was a gorgeous game. But I think this game just did it effortlessly and it captured the style that I remembered exactly while looking so fresh and brand new. And I really, really loved the look of this game. Um, there's a lot of great looking games actually this year on the Switch, um, but this one takes the cake for me. Uh, well, I definitely did not want to pick Super Mario Bros. Wonder again, uh, Aww. but damn, the animations are great in that game. Um, it was a close second for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. felt like I had to pick something else. And this is where I slotted in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Um, and I know wow. that like this game in some ways, like Jordan just said, is something the Switch can pull off and is something we've kind of seen before. But I was really, ex I really enjoyed visually the additions of the depths and the the sky islands and the new enemies and the new uh, things. And I just think, even though it's more of the same, I just think it looks really good. And I think Nintendo does a really good job of taking, you know, simple cartoony things and 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 making them look great on the Switch and with how big yeah. it is and and all that sort of thing. That was my choice. Maybe not the best looking game on the Switch, but. Um, they pulled it off. Uh, so. Wow. Again, another award I thought you were going to give to Pikmin 4. <laughs> I was like, there is no way Patrick doesn't pick Pikmin 4 for this one. Uh, that was one of my runners up along with uh, Pizza Tower Cocoon and Viewfinder as well. I thought those were all really amazingly designed games. But man, Pikmin 4 getting snubbed. <laughs> <laughs> <Ay, ay>, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, we're going to be presenting our next Golden Heads Award. The award is shouldn't be on the Switch uh, award. Uh, <laughs> and the nominees are Hogwarts Legacy, Borderlands 3, Outer Wilds, MLB The Show 2023, and Batman Arkham Knight. And the Golden Head Award goes to Hogwarts Legacy. Congratulations. Hogwarts Legacy shouldn't be yeah. here. Wow, yeah. dude. The fact that like this game got pushed back so far, it was supposed to release yeah. day and date with the other versions. And I'm like, no way. Do you know how much work it's going to take to get this game on the Switch? It is 
don't get me wrong, pretty impressive. They were able to downgrade the game enough of course. to get it on there. And it wasn't just like a descaling. It was like taking out a bunch of elements, degrading a bunch of textures. And it seemed like actually a decent amount of work to try to get this wow. game running on the Switch. However, it looks like ass. It looks <laughs> yeah. so bad. Like yeah. it's like at that point, you're like, just make what? it a next console, like next gen exclusive, you know? Yeah. At this point in the Switch's lifespan, You'd think that we would understand just because you can port a game to Switch doesn't mean you should port a game to Switch. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens with Switch too, I guess. Totally. And, you know, if you doubt this decision, please go to YouTube, watch a side-by-side <laughs> video like I did today, and you will see the stark difference. Is it, It's ridiculous. Anyway. Well, next up, we do, uh, we're going to be giving out our genre awards. So there's going to be a little, um, a few rounds here, and we'll maybe do this one a little more rapid fire. Mm-hmm. We're going to uh, lead off with multiplayer game. And uh, for this one, I picked F099. <laughs> Very um, good. I think, you know, it's a little bit of a bummer that you can't play it necessarily with the people you choose, but it is still a multiplayer game. And I have had, I love multiplayer games. And this is, you know, it's a great addition to, to the multiplayer games on, available on the Switch. Luckily now, since nobody's playing it, it's very easy. <laughs> you can queue friends. up with your friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> F-099. I'll, I'll go next. That was my runner up. Uh, but my best multiplayer that I uh, gave to this year was WarioWare Move It. I cannot tell you the amount of fun I had IRL in the same room with people looking like a total jackass playing this game. Uh, Just like having zero qualms about uh, our appearance and just doing everything we can to beat the mini games as fast as possible. Uh, WarioWare Move It is an absolute delight and dream to play with other people and I recommend it to everyone. Uh, Following David's lead, I picked a game that's not on the Switch. Uh, but the most fun I had playing multiplayer this year was playing Lethal Company with some friends, you know? Mm. I really like Phasmophobia when it came out, and it just like that idea of a game was really fun. And then this one just kind of takes that idea and ports it to a fucked up capitalist, uh, Cthulhu inspired hellscape of space. And it's just a lot of fun. You just it just creates these scenarios where you and your friends are yelling at each other to have and just having a good time, you know. I was recently gifted this game and I can't wait to try it out. We should definitely we play it. We got to play. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Summer? I also had to go with F099 out of Fuck yeah. what came out this year. Right. <laughs> of what came out this year, the game that is a multiplayer game that I played the most was F099. I was playing it today. I feel <laughs> like I'm also one of the people who still continued to play it for a while when people were like, oh, it's not no one's playing it. I'm like, oh, oh, oh I am. <laughs> like, I still really, really enjoy it. I'm excited that they put more cosmetic crap in there today or this week, whatever. Um, yeah. And if that's the kind of updates that they're going to continue to add, then they've got me because that's all it takes for me to keep playing something. Yeah. Is, oh, I want that outfit or, you know, my, yeah, there's, there's my racing levels machine. Now. I love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's our multiplayer picks. Our next genre that we're going to be all giving picks for is RPG role playing game. Ooh, who wants to go first? I do. All right. Because it has to go to Super Mario RPG. It's got wow. RPG in the title. What's more RPG than that? <laughs> That's true. Most RPG. <laughs> it is the most RPG game that came out this year. It's in the name. Um, uh, and out of it, I was out of what came out for the Switch, right? What I've been playing yeah. on the Switch this year. Um, I, I am enjoying it. What's really funny about my experience, I think my experience rings true to what you guys were kind of saying on that episode of the podcast was every so often I get into a, you know, I don't know if I'm feeling it. And then literally like two minutes later, I'm like, oh no, yeah, that is good. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's, I think, um, I I, and I think I, that's kind of my experience with good, you know, RPGs that I end up really liking. Um, I this is my first experience with it, too. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good. I'll go next. Unfortunately, uh, my pick uh, is not on Switch. But you know what? God damn it. 
I had to give it uh, to this game because this game got totally fucking snubbed at the Game Awards. I'm giving Best RPG to Starfield this year. I loved Starfield. Sorry, Summer. I know that you probably wanted to give this to Baldur's Gate 3. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm breaking the rules. I was going to, and then yeah. I was like, oh, we want to stick to Switch titles. <laughs> My bad. I kind of forgot about that rule. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's only your fifth time doing yeah. that. Yeah, 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 man. Look, I'm, I'm back at home. I'm, I'm drinking with my dad and watching movies. Uh, but we, uh, Starfield, I had such a good time with this game. I thought this game was criminally overlooked. I mean, I understand that a lot of people had a lot of issues with it. But as far as just like an RPG experience goes, a Bethesda RPG, I had such a blast with this game. Uh, and I'm not even done with it. I just got kind of sidetracked playing other games. I can't wait to go back and put a lot more time and do a lot of the side quests in this game. Uh, I love Starfield. And uh, I don't think it deserves the hate. That's my pick. Very nice. Uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah, I'll go real quick. It's Sea of Stars. <laughs> you know, I already talked about it. It's just Sea of Stars. It was my favorite RPG that came out this year. Patrick, go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I got a different one then. Um, this year, I have chosen Fire Emblem Engage. Um, wow. You know, it came out at the very beginning of the year in January, so it's it's harder to remember, but I loved this game. Um, yeah, I, I loved it too. I just don't always classify them as RPGs. Yeah, so well, I still <laughs> said it. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you don't have to. It was it's my a most strat- game this year. <laughs> it's a strategy game, but I think it's an RPG. Um, I'm I'm calling it one for the purposes of this. Um, otherwise, I have Patrick, no pick. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, is this the only <laughs> RPG you played this year? <laughs> Maybe, but it's also one I really, really loved, and I Very spent good. a ton of time on. And um, man, uh, really, like I think it happened around the time we had a, a snowstorm here where we were kind of snowed in, and I just was happy to just sit there and play this game all day. Um, so... Yeah, you that's know, I, that's my pick for this one. I almost picked it for multiplayer. I'm remembering this now because it was. I, I was like, I actually had a lot of fun with the multiplayer. I did too. Oh, yeah, you Fire did streams of those. Engaged. I really exactly. did too. That specific, like, I was like, oh yeah, I I streamed the multiplayer of this, and we had a blast. Like, yeah, it was <laughs> it was a weird, stupid multiplayer thing. But actually, that's a big part of the reason I picked it too. Is like I remember mm-hmm. like. It, I kind of wish more people had been into that part of it because I was like I waiting know. for my turn, you know, <laughs> like, but, uh, let's get back into it. Did you, ever play, did you play the DLC? I did the not. No. Get the DLC. Let's do it. Let's get in back. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, uh, moves us along to platformer. So, um, I don't know where we're going to go with this one, but I have a feeling. Uh, uh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sensing a sweep here, dude. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go first and just call it. I mean, it's got to be Super Mario Wonder, right? I mean, this was the best 2D Mario in such a long time. There were other great platformers this year as well. I don't want to diminish any of them. You know, obviously, Pizza Tower, I've talked about a lot, was an incredible platformer. But man, Mario bringing us back to the what makes the franchise so great. Uh, this is one of the best Mario games of all time, and it's just what a pleasure that it is in 2023 we were able to play a brand new Mario game of this caliber. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that was my pick as well. Yeah. That was my pick as well. Which is why this is the category I decided to break the rule for. Ooh. Something that wasn't. <laughs> What'd you pick? I, it, I went with Hi-Fi Rush. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's definitely a platformer. Um, it is as much platformer as it is rhythm game. Um, because if you're good enough at platformers, you don't need rhythm with mm. this one, I would say, right? Like, uh, but um, yet, yeah, ob- obviously, I loved Super Mario Wonder as well. Um, but I d- felt like I'd ha- I had to bring up Hi-Fi Rush at some point on this episode as well, um, because what a delight that game was, too. Um, mm-hmm. Just such a wonderful experience, that one, too. And like I'm not, and I'm not like a huge platformer person either, um, which is why I love that game so much for including that rhythm element um, because that's where it brings me back in. Is uh, I'm not always as good at platforming games, so but I am great at rhythm games. So <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> loved how they combined that. Very good. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and move on to our next Golden Heads Award. We've got a great one for you guys here. The next uh, Golden Heads Award is for the best Switch-like out there. The Switch has uh, 
just jump started uh, the public's fascination in handheld consoles once again, and we've got a whole bunch on the market right now. We're going to go through our favorites here. Uh, the nominees for best Switch like are Steam Deck OLED, Lenovo Legion Go, Asus ROG Ally, PlayStation Portal, and Logitech G Cloud. Mm-hmm. And the award for best Switch like goes to the Steam Deck OLED, baby. It's the Steam Deck's award to lose. The Ste- they, they, they took the Steam Deck and they made it even better. Uh, Steam Deck OLED wins best Switch like of the year. And it has the added benefit of being able to play Switch games. So <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're going to move on to our sort of individual categories. Uh, you know, we all have our unique taste in gaming. And um, so we all are going to give our own little category award here. David, you're up first. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I uh, went again with an award I've given in the past, which is for best puzzle game. Uh, there have been a lot of great puzzle games this year, uh, some of which uh, include what you guys might think I might give this to, including something like Suica Game or Logi Art Grimoire, uh, which were both excellent games, and I love both of them immensely. But I'm going to go with a bit of a dark horse pick here, and I'm going to go with the New York Times puzzle game Connections. Uh, <laughs> I have played this. Connections is is a, a, a daily game, much like the crossword and like Wordle. And I have become enamored with Connections this year. I play it every day. Whenever I play the Wordle, I have so much fun with it. And it's a game that I love playing with friends. Basically what it is, is they give you 16 words and you have to pick. And I've got a little video uh, that's playing right now too. I can show you a little bit how it plays. But you have a grid of 16 words and then you have to figure out what the four categories are based on those 16 words. You have to group four words together into categories, but they don't tell you what the categories are. So you kind of have to figure what the connections are between all the words that are on the uh, page. And it's devilishly difficult sometimes. Sometimes they really try to fuck with you. It's a really fun game. It's so much fun to play with other people and like race and see who can get it first and who can get it in the least amount of times. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I was, I was really smitten with connections this year. So give it a chance if you haven't yet. Yeah, it's fun. I I like word games a lot. So, um, mm-hmm. and we play like the Wordle in our house together a lot. And then my son is always like picking another game on on the New York Times thing, and that mm-hmm. one's come up, and I'm pretty good at it. I'm like, ooh, I see it. I'm good at yeah. stuff like the, that. The, there are Wordle ripoffs on the Switch, and I'm really hoping somebody brings a Connections ripoff to the <laughs> Switch because I would play that all the time, like one you could just play forever. You know? Can you play this in your internet browser on the Switch? <laughs> I don't know how you get to the yeah. internet browser. But yeah, yeah, you'd have to do the back the back end like signing into a Wi-Fi network like hack or whatever. Yeah, you can. I'm do sure it. you can play it on the internet browser on the 3ds. So yeah, at the very least, <laughs> you, sure could use, you could use you could use the DS web browser uh, cartridge uh, to do this. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I sold mine. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll go next, and um, as I do pretty much every year, uh, I'm giving my uh, award to best game to play with a child, a kid. And it's always just changing because my kid's getting older. <laughs> and, it, and so, uh, you know, the complexity of the games uh, goes up. And this is another one where Mar- Super Mario Bros. Wonder was definitely a big contender. I wish I could say Pikmin 4 could win this, but the the, like... I don't love the co-op in it, so uh, sorry, Pikmin Four. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one to one that caused a bit of stress and and frustration, but also tons of joy, and that is WarioWare Move It. Um, yes, you know we even though there there were times where we yelled at each other uh, and times where he got so frustrated, you know he like borderline like had meltdowns. Um, we just really had a blast when it was working and for us and 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 um and moving forward, and so um, it it was really good good memories and good times together playing through WarioWare. Move it! I love the face turn that you've had with WarioWare. Move it! Uh, it's like a total it's a total success story, Patrick. I love to see it. <laughs> yeah. So my award is best cosplay fodder. So this is this is go this goes to a game that I right a category that I felt like was really true to me. This yeah. goes to a game that 
uh, I believe both for myself and what I see in the cosplay community um, that when it came out, people said, oh, yes, this is what I have to cosplay from this year and probably well into um, the next year. And this award is going to Fire Emblem Engage. Mm. Um, Fire Emblem is historic for bringing us designs that um, master level cosplayers regularly pull from to recreate uh, <laughs> the outfits and costumes from uh, go on to win worldwide level competitions in. And the same is true for Fire Emblem Engage. I've already made two cosplays from it, uh, Yunaka's base outfit and her swimsuit. Uh, I have plans to continue to cosplay from it in the new year. Um, I've already made made new friends cosplaying from this specific game as well um, and already have specific plans with this game um, and cosplays from it in like you know in the horizon with other people um it's just just some delightful designs in this one ones that are definitely like kind of anger inducing of <laughs> how um, they weren't thinking about actual costume design when designing some of these um characters but that's part of the fun of it and that's where we continue to learn lots of ridiculous uh skills as cosplayers thanks to that um so this award uh goes to fire emblem engage beautiful um my award i you know a lot of people uh you know my mom included she reads a book to go to sleep she always reads a little bit and then falls asleep so I was like, you know, I do something similar, but with my switch. And so my award is the best game to fall asleep to. Uh, you know, I played a lot of games to fall asleep to this year. We had, you know, Detective Pikachu. We had uh, <laughs> Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. That was one different for a reasons. Bit. Those two. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then uh, I also was playing a little bit of Sea of Stars, but. Uh, the uh, my award for best game to fall asleep to goes to Super Mario RPG. Hell yeah! You know, I I definitely played that the most. Like right before I was going to bed, I'd play it in like fifteen minute increments, and I'd get so sleepy. And right before I was about to drop the switch on my face <laughs> or on my body, whatever, I was like, okay, I'm gonna put it down and turn off the light and go to sleep. And it, uh, yeah, it it lulled me into a peaceful night of slumber with good dreams. Would you say that these games are also good to relax slash study to? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. So we've got another Golden Heads Award for you. Our next Golden Heads Award is the CEO we are most happy to see go. The R.I.P. Bozo Award. <laughs> the Golden Parachute Award. <laughs> Oh, I should have called it that, you guys. That's so good. <laughs> so the Golden Parachute Award <laughs> nominees are Jim Ryan of Sony, John Ricciatiello of Unity, and Bobby Kotick of Activision and Blizzard. The winner is Bobby fucking Kotick. Yes. Get the fuck yeah. out of here, you yes. fuckhead. The only one of these that is most likely to be on that list of Jeffrey Epstein names. <laughs> Hundo P. Let's not get it We just got more information about, so like you say that, and the relevancy yeah. is like sky high. Yeah, I think the timing is not a uh, coincidence. Dude. Oh, wait a Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, that's a one level deep conspiracy that is, wow, I'm going to look that up after we're done. Literally, yeah. we just got more info. You might actually be on the nose mm -hmm. okay <laughs> moving on yeah well we'll move on um we're gonna have another <laughs> no, i could safely say this is the first golden heads award that has had a jeffrey epstein <laughs> reference uh <laughs> I'm we're breaking new right ground now. this year, we've 2023. Got, we've got another uh, series of awards uh, we're each going to give picks on. And the one uh, that we're going to start off with is the best non-2023 game played in 2023. And I'll, I'll, I'll go first. This might not really count, but uh, I'm doing it anyway. And it's Splatoon 3, you guys. That counts. Because I yeah. played more of Splatoon 3 in 2023 than I did in 2022 <laughs> and more than I did of any other game, like hundreds and hundreds of hours. So yeah. um, I don't I don't know. I'm hoping that maybe next year's the year I move on. <laughs> Move on, but the um, DLC's coming out next year, so <laughs> maybe we'll not. See. So no, it's going to be your game. Your next year every with this DLC. Every time I think I can quit, I just like 
I like, I have 10 minutes and I'm like, oh, I don't oh, really want to, like, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I love it. It's a good but... game. Why stop? I also put a hundred hours in it this year. <laughs> well, anyway, that's, that's my pick for, for, for that. <laughs> Uh, I'll go next. I've been singing its praises ever since I uh, beat it for the first time earlier this year. But uh, my best non-2023 game is Riven, the mm. sequel to Mist. I finally beat it again. Not on the Switch. I'm sorry. I totally <laughs> fucked up the rules this year. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Riven is, uh, man, it's just, I, I, I played it when I was a kid. Uh, and I never beat it. And then when I finally beat it, I was like, holy fuck, guys. Like, I think this is one of the five, like, best games ever made. Like, I truly think this game is an absolute masterpiece. I've been singing its praises as much as I can. Uh, I cannot wait for the remake. So much so that I was actually just quoted in an, in the latest issue of Game Informer talking about how excited I am about the remake to Riven. Yes. Uh, so d I don't say I don't put my fucking money where my mouth is. Uh, I am a true Riven die hard especially after having finally beaten it this year uh what a delight i really recommend everybody play it even before the remake comes out uh it is such a great game um go play it right now my best non 2023 game played in 2023 it's not a very old game uh chained echoes mm. i forgot that i played this game at the beginning of this year and uh this game we were playing it for a jrpg club and i might have i think a lot of people finished it but we schedule it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it ended up being me and Matthew Stoner and me just like talking at Matthew Stoner about the story <laughs> for this game and being like, there's a lot of existential ideas within this story. Like, what do you think that says for da 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 da? I'm like, I was like, oh shit. I think I went way too deep in this game. Like the lore <laughs> and like how that lore affects like the entire world. And like, I just love that game, man. I don't want to say like say too much, but like the lore that they build and like where the story ends up is insane. And the fact that it was mostly made by like one person is just incredible mm -hmm. on top of the fact that it is, it takes like similar to why I like sea of stars takes a tried and true formula and just adds like layers of complexity that, you know, don't exist in the older games. And like that, in that way it modernizes it so that we can still play these like styles of games that we like from the past, but they don't feel as dated. And uh, also just like having the mechs as well as like the humans and just like switching that gameplay style up. Anyway, whatever. This is, yeah, that was my favorite game that I played this year, even though it only came out last year. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Chained Echoes is part of the trifecta of like must play 16-bit JRPGs on the Switch, uh, including Chained Echoes, Sea of Stars, and CrossCode. All three of those games, absolute must-play bangers, uh, masterpieces on the Switch. So I kind of broke the rule with my winner for this. My game, my best game that I played this year that didn't come out this year was Fire Emblem. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess it technically early access was for... <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, go, sorry, continue. Mine was Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. Mm. And so and it was my pl me playing through this was triggered by um, after playing Fire Emblem Engage because of how that game is set up. It inspired me to want to go back and play some of the previous games. Uh, I had finished Fire Emblem Awakening right before Engage came out. Uh, the uh, one of the other uh, 3DS games. So sorry, it is a game on the 3DS, which was the system right before <laughs> the Switch. So that's why I'm saying I kind of broke the rule. It's a Nintendo system. Uh, so I, I purchased it, a physical copy of it back when they originally announced the closure because I was like, well, I think I want a physical copy of every Fire Emblem game. So I want to make sure that I have it. Um, and good golly, uh, what uh, <laughs> Jordan, what you just said about going too deep into the lore, uh, that was me with this game, except, you know, five six years too late uh so uh because good golly this is it, so much when i was playing through this i was like this is so clearly the game that they made before three houses uh it is a remake of the second fire emblem game that came out on the uh, super famicom i believe famicom or super famicom uh when it's old um but because of that is like a true remake in the sense of they just completely overhauled everything about it and uh it does 
does play a little differently than other Fire Emblem games um, with like the weapon system. But uh, the storytelling, the way that you control two separate armies that eventually combine at the end, um, things like that, that made it so clearly, wow, this is the game before Three Houses. Uh, but also the style of storytelling. Um, the art is gorgeous. The voice acting was amazing. I just... I, wow, wow, talk to me about Shadows of Virtue because, <laughs> oh, wow, what a game. And I'm so behind on playing it. So please talk to me <laughs> about it. Awesome. Well, our next uh, category we're all going to give a pick for uh, is best not on Switch game. Uh, so David's already given a few of these, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start actually because I I, I interpreted because my pick is Pikmin Four no, okay. uh, <laughs> would be because appropriate. It on the Steam deck. I, I played it on the Steam Deck. No, 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 because uh, I actually interpreted this as a game that I think needs to be on Switch mm. most that isn't, uh, and so for me, I picked Whisker Squadron Survivor. Um, which is by our good friends at Flip Fly Games. Um, this game is fucking fantastic. It is basically a cross between Star Fox and Vampire Survivors. It is a uh, Star Fox roguelike, basically, and you're going through and you're blowing up guys and it's all corridor-based. It's so fantastic. It needs to live on the Switch. And in fact, I was just reading a thread on Twitter today uh, from our friend Aaron at Flip Fly, who was talking about how they just actually got some money from a platform to bring it to their platform. So hopefully that's the Switch. Hopefully we see this out soon. But Whisker Squadron Survivor, such a fantastic game. Uh, It's doing well, uh, but if you haven't played it yet, please check it out. I honestly didn't play a lot of games not on the Switch this year. Um, Again, Splatoon 3. (laughs) Um, But uh, I did play a couple. And uh, this was a toss-up for me between two games in the same franchise. And I'll go ahead and mention them both. The ones I thought of here were Sonic Dream Team, which is a little too recent. Uh, So I'm not sure. I haven't played enough of it to be sure. And then um, the other one was The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, which I had a ton of fun playing and is completely free, um, but is only on PC. Um, So, yeah, I I got a a Sonic uh, Sonic on the brain for this one. I'm really enjoying Dream Team. um, Sonic Dream Team was my runner up for this award. Definitely. Oh, really? Okay, that makes me yeah. feel better about it. I'm like, yeah. it d- d- does deserve it, right? Okay. It was it was my runner-up along with every game that I <laughs> that you already picked. That's not on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. This is definitely recency bias, but also <clears throat> I feel pretty well informed in picking this game. Uh, so yeah, uh, listeners of the pod and members of the Discord know that I recently got a Xbox Series X, and the first game I purchased was Resident Evil 4 Remake. And it's fantastic. It is like everything I would want out of this remake because, you know, I didn't want a ton of updates to the combat and everything like that. But what they did do was they kind of like fleshed out areas in the in the uh, original game that you kind of just breeze through. Like, uh, for example, I finally got to the lake. If you've played Resident Evil 4, you know what I'm talking about. And when you're done with the lake, there's this whole they added all these little islands and stuff. So you cruise around your little boat and you're jumping, hopping off your boat to go to a little island and find like a piece of the puzzle that you need to go to keep going forward to find a key. And just like things like that on top of the graphical upgrades, uh, it's just fantastic. It is such an incredibly well-rounded remake in that it's not it's faithful enough, but it adds on top of in a positive way, which sometimes they don't always do. Or sometimes it's so straight to the point that it's not as good. Mm-hmm. So anyway, but uh, yeah, so that's for me, the uh, best not on the switch game. David, would you like to correctly interrupt me? This time? <laughs> no, please go for okay. it. Okay. Well, David was correct a category ago for my best not on the Switch game. It has to go to Baldur's Gate 3. What? Uh, and I'll go ahead and say it, it feels weird to say Dark Horse anymore about this game and the impact it's had. I was really excited about it before it came out. I remembered thinking, oh, you know, it's on the PC, so I don't know how much I'm going to play it. But what everybody is already saying about it, I want to at least give it a go. Uh, I remember the weekend that it came out. Uh, I didn't buy it exactly at launch. It was a Sunday evening. I had heard so much about it that I was like, okay, I'm buying this. 
uh, and uh, on a Sunday evening, what a mistake, uh, because <laughs> it was it wasn't ready to play until about nine p.m. and it took me an, it took me an hour to get through character creation, and then yeah. I continued and then I continued to play <laughs> throughout the rest of the night. Uh, and for, by the end of that week, I said, "Wow." Tears of the Kingdom would have been, you know, <laughs> like I just that was how soon I knew that Baldur's Gate three. What a what a just a giant an elephant of a game of the year. I can't believe it. <laughs> I it's just it's massive. I just and what it just caught me by such a surprise uh, because I've never played anything like it. Never played a CRPG like this. Um, it's got me interested in the uh, previous. Um, Oh, Divinity Original Sin games, uh, which apparently run great on Switch. So maybe next year, <laughs> my best not on the Switch game. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it right now. Um, it's just, it's the game that actually got me to sit at my computer <laughs> this year. All right. Well, uh, next up, we're going to give our best gaming moment of the year. So uh, anybody feel in this? I'll go first because I don't have a video uh, to go with mine. A little bit of uh, behind the scenes notes. Uh, But I think my favorite moment this year was waiting in line for Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, cool. (laughs) uh, Like I did a midnight release. I was like, wow, this feels like so like 10 years ago. Like this doesn't really happen anymore. And like the excitement was like a fever pitch. And it just kind of started with me just kind of driving around trying to figure out who was going to have like the special edition tears of the kingdom, like on the day of release. And so, you know, I kind of got to a couple stores and they were able to give me like, Oh, we're going to have this many. We open at this time, whatever. And so I went by GameStop and like, they're doing a midnight release. And I'm like, well, I mean, do you have any? And the, the managers being really like squirrely about it. (laughs) And right around the same time that I I showed up, like maybe like five minutes before this other dude showed up and he was like, they definitely have some, they're just being really squirrely about it. Um, He said, if you wait, you won't be disappointed or something, something along Mm -hmm. those lines. So I'm going to wait. And it's like, shit, I was not prepared. Hang on. (laughs) Do you want a burger? (laughs) I will buy you a burger and I'm going to go to my house, uh, pick up a couple things, go buy a burger and come back. I'll be back in less than 30 minutes, which I was, it was true. So I brought Mm -hmm. him a burger and we just ate burgers and talked about Zelda. uh, And we just like hung out. And then by the time I got back, there was two more people. And then by the time the midnight release, so this was at like 7 30, 8 PM by the end of like the, the release, it was like 200 people long, long. Whoa. That's cool. And I was like, Whoa, this is just like the old days, man. That's so great. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I was just like, man, this is like just such a wholesome moment of like taking me back to yesteryear of everyone just waiting in line, you know, whoever was the manager, uh, or, Someone was going around to the GameStops. He works for GameStop and like dropping off cookies and like donuts for people That's to like great. take in, you know, and like a cases of water. And like, it was just like a really wholesome moment where I'm like, this is just doesn't happen anymore, especially in like a post pandemic world. So it was yeah. just like a really nice thing to see everyone camping out, all excited for the exact same thing. It was beautiful. You know, we talked about me playing Splatoon 3 a shit ton, but honestly, the game that I've probably played the most this year is my own game. Uh, an mm. indie game that I'm making called Monochrome Heights. And I think, you know, throughout the year, there's been lots of moments that have been of, of me working on it and pushing it forward. But a big push forward I did was thanks to the San Japan uh, convention and, and having a deadline of <laughs> wanting to take a decently playable demo there. And uh, taking it there and it being a pretty good success for me of getting to watch and uh, interact with people playing it. Um, You know, the first real blind play test I've been able to pull off um, with some, you know, pretty positive feedback. And I've been able to make some good changes from that. But just being able to watch people play my game and and getting and being forced to have a deadline and getting it into decent enough shape for that was really my personal gaming moment of the year. Mine is also similar to yours in that it was a convention as well. Real quick, I'll say my runner up was finally seeing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe completed. I'll say that. Uh what a fucking incredible achievement that was. But my I have to say my gaming moment of the year was going to Mysterium Con this year in Spokane, Washington. 
uh, being around a bunch of hardcore Mist fans. And I'm like the hardest core Miss fan that I know in my friend group. Like no one gives a fuck about this series. I mean, some people do. I mean, obviously everybody does now that we had the creators of Mist on the show. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but like being around a bunch of people that like share your exact like passion, especially when it's so niche, was such a magical thing. And um, it was a wonderful time in a summer that was very difficult for me in so many ways. This was like a really, really, really like much needed experience. And man. Man, I had the time of my life there, and I can't wait to go back. Uh, it was a wonderful time. Shout out to uh, all the friends I made at Mysterium Con this year. Mine is going to have to go to, I went to MAGFest for the first time, which is the music and gaming festival, um, where most of the music is centered on video game music um, to make the music and gaming festival. Uh, it was for my first time going, um, and... It, it almost feels shameful to lump the entire thing into one moment, um, but getting to see as soon as they announced that uh, the 8-Bit Big Band was going to be one of the headlining guests, uh, music guests, that was what made me pull the trigger on it and decide that I had to go. And gosh, what a correct decision that was, uh, getting to see them live, along with a lot of other incredibly uh, talented musicians, um, and then just getting to hang out. If they're if there wasn't sp something specific we were doing, there was one of the hotel lobby bars that you would just hang out in that they regularly had um, different musicians playing in. And then you would meet other people, um, got to, you know, I wore, I, I actually had a group for um, my Bravely Default 2 cosplays, let alone actually getting recognized, which has never happened at any other convention. <laughs> um so, uh, like we were saying, I, yeah, I've gone to conventions for 10 years. Um, but this was my first time that I like really felt like I was actually like I found the right space, um, for what it is that I'm passionate about, like with video game music. Um, and here I'm getting ready in less than a month. I'll be there again. I can't wait. Yeah. I, I'd really like to go to one as well. It's just, I, wow. Yeah. If you care about video game music, it is just the, it is the place to be. <laughs> Those are fantastic moments. <laughs> uh, but, but like, we're going to move on to our last golden head award and to our last um individual picks and uh to i will be the one presenting this final golden heads award which is for worst industry news so as we've kind of hinted at it's been a great year for games but a not so great year for game development or game developers so uh the nominees for worst industry news are the microsoft blizzard acquisition going final <laughs> The Unity Fees debacle. That was this year. <laughs> the massive amount of layoffs of game developers and closures of studios. It's estimated between six and 10,000 developers lost their job this year. There was, there was one yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, it could be over 10K. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We still got a few days left. Um, yeah. And then finally, E3 uh, being gone for good. There will never be another E3. So a lot of bad news this year, but uh, the award for worst industry news is going to go to the mass layoffs uh, and studio closures. Um, it's just a shame that an industry that makes this much money uh, is keeping it at the top and, and running their studios by pumping out games and closing them and firing people and, and then doing it again. Um, yeah. So... Uh, I, somebody who's in discords with people who are trying to find industry jobs and stuff. A lot of people in those spaces are going yeah. through a time. I, I just had a conversation about this today with my dad on just like why this is happening so much, not only in games, but all across the industry. And I think a lot of the bad news nominees are all related mm. <laughs> in this. It's yeah. mergers and acquisitions lead to, too many people lead to increased uh, investor demands, leads to increased layoffs, right? And uh, you're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing it uh, on our side as well uh, in animation, and it's happening everywhere. So uh, hopefully 2024, we could figure out what the fuck is going on <laughs> and make some positive changes in this industry. And then we're going we're gonna to close it out with our game of the year. And in fact, we're going to close it out with our top three games of the year. I'll start with my th uh, third place game for the year, which uh, we've talked about it already. I've talked about it already, so I'll just move on. It's Fire Emblem Engage, um, mm -hmm. my number three for the year. 
Well, then I'll go next because my number three game of the year is also Fire Emblem Engage. <laughs> I had what a great time with it. I like it. It deserves to be like somebody should say it. Right. It, <laughs> it was a good game and we shouldn't be ashamed of saying it. OK, that's all I'll say. <laughs> my number three game of the year is Pikmin 4. It got a mention. Uh, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, how am I the one picking Pikmin 4? Like, I haven't played a Pikmin game since Pikmin 1 on the GameCube, and I was blown away. I love this game. I had so much fun. I was not expecting to 100% it, but here we are, and I 100%ed it and added 40 hours to Patrick's uh, <laughs> year in playtime uh, of Pikmin 4. But yeah. yeah, I love that game. That was my third favorite game of the year. Wow. Congratulations, Patrick. You let your franchise down. <laughs> uh, There's still a two and a one. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I think I know what they are. But anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> uh, uh, my uh, number three uh, game of the year was F-099. Nice. Uh, I, yeah. truly, I truly think that F-099 is not only uh, potentially the best F-Zero game out of a bunch of incredible F-Zero games. I think it might be one of the best racing games and one of the best multiplayer online games of all time. I love this game so much. Uh, I really, really, really hope we get more content going forward. And the recent drop makes me think that that might be a possibility. So number three goes to F-099. Hell yeah. Thank you for doing it. I'll keep us going with number two, and I am going for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in my number two Mm. spot. yeah, I've already talked about it a lot. Great game. Loved it. Then I'm going to go next because my number two is also <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, yes. twins. Twins. Twinning. <laughs> Until number one. I have Probably. A feeling, yeah. But I uh, just, gosh, it just whammy. Like, it can't not say it again. It make making me go back and play all the other games and like going bet- like back and forth between the two play a little bit of it and then go and play a little bit of like um the oracle games like i'm in links awakening i'm just the way it pulls me into the whole like universe as a whole it's beautiful my number two game was sea of stars you know like mm. in a game where I, you know i wasn't really playing a ton of rpgs as of late but then once i played chain nectos i was like I, I, I'm all in, like, let's go, you know, uh, shout out to JRPG club when earthbound and like really just getting my love of that franchise or like that genre back up. but sea of stars just continued that. And I was just really glad to have another really classic style SNES RPG. So yeah, that's my number two. Very good. My number two this year was super Mario brothers. Wonder just an app. Sorry. I talked about it before, but an absolute return to form. This game had me grinning ear to ear the entire time and then getting to the end of the game, grinding my ass off uh, in order to not like grinding really, but just like working really, really, really hard for that final stage was like the icing on the cake. I think that's something that Mario games are uniquely good at is that sense of accomplishment as you 100% a game. Uh, I love that. I think it's the only game I really 100% this year. Uh, an absolute triumph from start to finish. And I cannot wait for the inevitable Super Mario Brothers Wonder 2. I hope we see a direct sequel. This game is fucking fantastic. Okay. All right, following that up, then uh, is it because my favorite genre of video games are 2D platformers? Is it because my favorite first party Nintendo games are Mario games? Or is it because I've been playing it today? I don't know, <laughs> but it is Super Mario Bros. Wonder is my pick for a uh, game of the year. I already talked about it a lot. I'm move, move on to something. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we break our twinning streak. And I'm sorry I'm breaking the switch rule with uh, it, this has never <laughs> happened before in my entire life, which is why it just it does have to get it because the like, Nintendo games are typically my favorite games. Baldur's Gate 3 is mm. my game of the year. I am so sorry, Switch listeners. I have to say it. I have to say it. I even went into this game thinking, you know, everybody loves a Starian, so I'm going to try, like, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to figure out who the Dark Horse characters are. Uh, yeah, I see who the Dark Her- Horse characters are. I don't know that I care. A Starian is my husband, uh, and Karlak is my wife, and you can play the game that way. Um, so, <laughs> right? Like a positive take on polyamory uh, <laughs> if you want it, or he- there's also healthy monogamy, too. It's beautiful. It was crunchy for the first five hours 
Uh, here I am a hundred hours later, still not to act three. I don't know what Baldur's Gate is still. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I imagine I, it's some sort of gate. <laughs> I hear you get there in act three. That's not me. And it's still my game of the year just because of how uh, immersive it is and how um, just the, the suspension of um, existing in it. Um, and it's just, it, it's also beautifully helped me to understand how to play D and D because I started a campaign at the same time and I feel like I'm a better D and D player because of it as well. Uh, it's mm-hmm. helped me to think more creatively when I'm playing with my friends in real life. Uh, and I love it for that reason as well. It's just like made me a better person and a better friend. Uh, <laughs> wow. So that's, that's a ringing endorsement. It's my game yeah. of the year. <laughs> All right. My game of the year, uh, I got to give it to Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I just had so much fun playing that game. Every facet of it is so finely tuned from the graphics to the story to just the, everything that like made Breath of the Wild good and taking it one step up. I, I just I didn't think it could be done. And here we are. I stand corrected and I'm excited to see where they take the franchise in the future. But mm. that's definitely my game of the year. So much fun. Yeah, I'm 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 piggybacking, man. I mean, you might you might have thought with all the non-switch representation I had throughout <laughs> this episode, I might have had not all switch games in the f- top three, but Tears of the Kingdom takes it for me as well. What an absolute triumph of a game. It took a nearly perfect masterpiece and made it even better. I know there's been a lot of discourse and this happens with a lot of things that are popular online about like, was tears of the kingdom that good? Like whatever. I kind of didn't even No, Let's drop all that. Tears of the kingdom is one of the finest video games ever created. Uh, I absolutely from start to finish was completely enthralled in this game. And there's still a bunch I haven't even done. And I put in like 150 something hours into this game. It was an absolute masterpiece. And like you said, Jordan, like I would have gladly taken a direct sequel to this and, yep. and spent time in this high rule for a third time. Anuma said, they're not doing that. They're going to do something different for the next Zelda game. And I'm so excited by that because they for one of my favorite game franchises of all time for the last two games in the franchise to be in my opinion the two greatest games in the franchise that gets me so excited for the future and uh boy howdy uh whatever they're smoking over there at nintendo (laughs) keep doing it because i'm really really happy with the direction of zelda uh game of the year goes to tears of the kingdom well that does it for our uh end of the year game of the year golden heads show Um, If you're out there listening and you've got any comments on any of our Golden Heads Awards or, you know, you've got a a different pick or you just want to share your top games. Maybe you're like an enormous Pikmin 4 fan. Uh, (laughs) And you're very disappointed. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Don't at me. I'm the only one who picked Pikmin 4 for anything because I... Listen, if I played it, I'm sure it would be up there. I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, We'll we'll have to do a Pikmin episode at some point. (laughs) We've done a couple. (laughs) But anyway... uh, Point is, let us know. And thanks for listening. And thanks to MilkyWay.co for doing our website. Thanks to Corduroy for doing our music. If you're looking for me, Patrick, you can find me most places online as PDYX. You can find me everywhere at WeBewitched. You can find me at Board and Discord, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm pretty much everywhere on the internet at Monolith Fiji. If you'd like to find our show on social media, we are at SwitchHeads on Twitter, at Super SwitchHeads on Instagram and Facebook. we got our website, SwitchHeads.com. And uh, we've got a Discord uh, and a Facebook group. Please join us at the Discord. We'd love to have you in there. We got links to both of those in the description of this episode, whether you're watching it on YouTube or you're listening to it on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever. Drop us a like, drop us a subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, we love you guys so much. Uh, let's get this, uh, let, let's let's make these controversial Golden Heads Awards as seen by as many people as possible because the people deserve to know what one least indie game uh, <laughs> we're gonna be back uh, next week with another special episode gang uh, we've got uh, our kind of annual look forward at what we think 2024 might have in store so I can't wait for you guys to hear that as well so make sure you tune in for that but in the meantime everybody you guys be safe out there be kind to yourself be kind to one another if you're uh, home or, or with friends or by yourself right now celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or any of the holiday season we hope that you have a wonderful safe holiday season we love you guys all very much we'll see you next week bye bye